Psycho's Norman Bates murdered women, true crime writes, a serial killer, wearing the faces of those he dug up. Psycho's Norman Bates, Silence of the Lambs Buffalo Bill, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre's Leatherface were all inspired by one seemingly mild-mannered Wisconsin man, Ed Gee. Born August 27, 1906, Ed is the second child of George and Augusta Gee. They're a typical family, with George an out-of-work drunk and Augusta a fanatically religious enforcer. Augusta is the head of the family, and in 1915 decides to move her family from La Crosse, Wisconsin, to an isolated farm six miles outside of Plainfield Village. George Gein dies in 1940, and Ed and his brother Henry work odd jobs to support the family. Ed works as a handyman and a babysitter. Henry and Ed have a pretty good relationship, but Henry doesn't share Ed's adoration and devotion to their mother. Augusta discourages her boys from going too far from home and teaches them that women are dangerous harlots who can't be trusted. On May 16, 1944, Ed and Henry are burning some marshland around their property, as you do, and the fire gets out of control. After they finally put it out, they can't find Henry. So Ed rounds up a search party, which he then leads straight to Henry's dead body. The medical authority rules it death by asphyxiation. The coroner decides no further investigation is needed, and Henry is buried with no autopsy. Shortly after Henry dies, Augusta suffers a stroke that leaves her weak and bedridden. And Ed is all about this. I mean, he loves caring for the only person he ever loved. And he happily provides the care she needs until a second stroke takes her life on December 29th, 1945. Now, Ed Gein is alone. He's totally lost without Augusta. She was all that mattered. Ed closes off every part of the house but the kitchen and a small side room where he sleeps. The once pristine rooms quickly become literal piles of garbage. He also takes an interest in true crime magazines that heavily feature murdered women. So flash to 1957, deer hunting season opening day. This is the rural Midwest, so all the able-bodied men head for the woods, including Bernice Warden's son, Frank. When Frank comes back from the hunt to check on his mother at her hardware store, he finds blood on the floor and the store's pickup truck missing. Frank racks his brain for who might have done this. Then he remembers that Ed Gein had been hanging around the shop lately and was in the day before asking about antifreeze. So what do you think the last purchase was at the register that day? Ed Gein kills Bernice loads her into her own truck and drives her out to his farm. Luckily, Ed is located and arrested at his neighbor's house. When they get to his property, they immediately find what they would later identify as Bernice Warden's body, hanging from the ankles in the shed behind Gein's house. Her head was removed, and her body had been through some stuff. They said it looked like someone was dressing a deer, which is when hunters remove internal organs to avoid disease. They also find the body of local tavern owner, Mary Hogan, who had disappeared three years earlier. Mary was a daunting, middle-aged, heavyset woman who reminded Gein of his mother. There was blood and signs of a struggle in her tavern and a 32 caliber cartridge on the floor. Over those three years, the townspeople would gossip about what could have happened to Mary, and Ed joked to several people that he had Mary up at his farm. While being questioned by DA Earl Killeen, Gein admits to taking over 40 trips to the local cemetery, where he dug up new graves on nine occasions and took what he wanted. He would then tan the skins to make his objects, like lampshades made of human skin. In his interrogation, he also admits to wearing the faces of those he dug up. When asked if he wore the face mask for long periods of time, he replies, no, I had other things to do. Gein also fashioned a bodysuit complete with breasts that he wore around his house. And when he was feeling frisky, he'd even wear it outside at night. Ed is arraigned and quickly found unfit to stand trial. He's sent to Central State Hospital for the Criminally Insane, where he spends his days watching TV, doing chores, reading the newspaper, or hanging out with his fellow criminally insane inmates. January 1968, 10 years after he entered Central State Hospital, Ed Gein is declared fit to stand trial. He's found guilty of the first degree murder of Bernice Warden, but is also found to be insane at the time of the murder and therefore not guilty by reason of insanity. He is sent back to Central State Hospital to live out the rest of his days. Ed Gein dies July 26, 1984 at 78 years old. <laughs>